Okay, great. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, I guess, yes, live now, right? On. Yes, we are live now. So yeah, uh, hello, everyone. So thanks for joining us today. So we have another exciting webinar today. We have Ahmad John Khadirov with us, who works at the RICS uh, Learning Center. And he offered to talk about Okay, so he, uh, he would like to talk about how we can prepare, how you can prepare for IELTS independently. Right, so um, over to you, Machan. Thank you so much, uh, Nurapa. So uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum everyone. So those who joined, uh, the reason actually that you are here already shows that you care about your education, you care about your, let's say, future, uh, so uh, the reason, first of all, let's start with the reason why, why I came up with this uh, topic and let's say this presentation and webinar, the guide to IELTS self-preparation. Right. As we know, uh, since pandemic started in early March, uh, a lot of people like uh, lost their jobs or their income shrink. So they're making less money than usual. So it also affected the, uh, their family. Like now uh, the parents are not able to send their uh, like uh, children to courses, all of it. Like, yes, yeah, some still can, but not uh, not many. That's why I thought uh, it would be a good uh, idea to help for those who cannot right now afford the teacher to help some guidance because most of the time students don't know what they're studying or they uh, just use whatever material comes to their mind or whatever materials they download from internet. And oftentimes they uh, like use not authentic materials, uh, like unreliable materials. And as a result, they end up getting a bad result and they just got frustrated and they blame the test. So hopefully after this webinar, uh, you will probably find a way to prepare on your own. But I'm not saying uh, self-preparation will can replace the preparation with a good teacher because anyway, uh, preparing for the exam you know with a teacher is a completely different thing so but i will try to do my best to help you how you can make on your own so here we go um just a moment so what is the agenda for today right first we'll do a little bit of warm up i need your support guys i need you to be active uh then because i might be asking some questions and at the end we will ask the things whether uh so you can leave your questions till the end of our webinar. Uh, we'll be covering them at the end of the webinar. So then I will talk about, okay, how to start. Imagine that you haven't started IELTS preparation, right? How to start, what to do, uh, what are the things that you probably need to do first? Then how to prepare, okay, this preparation process. Then how to keep going, because oftentimes students uh, just gave up during the middle of preparation. They just lose motivation for some reasons. And finally, when you should pass IELTS. Uh, and so finally, we'll wrap up everything we discussed. So warm up today. So background information about myself, just a short introduction. So as Nodropa told, my name is Ahmad Khadirov. I work currently in Rick's Education Center, probably in my opinion, one of the best, uh, if not the best education center, the uh, best team ever. So I myself grew up there, uh, thanks to the wonderful team. Uh, I myself achieved these achievements, a lot of things academic in terms of, so I'm really, really thankful for them. And uh, I'm, uh, I got actually bachelor this, uh, you know, graduated from bachelor in 2000, like 14 or 15, and then got the MA. So uh, both my diploma related to teaching and language and linguistics. So this is my passion, I can say. Uh, so now uh, I would like to ask some couple of questions before we go on. So could you write in the chat, everyone, just your name and level of English, right? Um, like uh, this is the first question. And if all the second question, um, have you passed IELTS? Yeah. And have you passed IELTS before? If yes, like uh, yes, or if not, not yet, you could write the answer. And the last question, the reason why you joined the webinar today, right? So uh, I'm gonna give like a minute. Uh, for these answers, and we'll move on with, uh, let's see, webinar. 
so if I want to see the chat on Drupa, it's this black screen coming up, I guess. So that's why <laughs> I'm not opening it. Bravo. So there is the first one. I'm opening that. Oh, hello, teacher. Hassan boy. Oh, good. Uh, upper intermediate, not yet. Not yet, bought here, advanced. Oh, I see so many wonderful students writing, answering their Arabia, not passed yet. Medina, bachelor degree, haven't passed IELTS. Just or upper intermediate, not yet. Rabia, not yet. Uh, so I can't hear anything. Gafar Alim, I think you need to turn on your microphone. So I'm not sure if I deserve it, 38 years. So why don't you deserve it? Think about it positively. You deserve it, absolutely. Sevar intermediate, not yet. Good evening, my name Mohira. Before I have passed it, it's wow. Like, I just keep reading over. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being active. It's just wonderful. Halil uh, Mahmoud Big. So wonderful. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much for being active and for, uh, you know, talking about your level of English and answering these questions. It's, it, it means so much. So uh, now <laughs> there's a, just an interesting memo. So you want to get 10.5, right? In Ireland. So, because oftentimes students come to me and you know what they say, they say, I want to get 10.5 teacher. Uh, and that's why I wrote here something called IELTS mania. It's uh, probably, you know, the meaning of mania. Mania is a uh, kind of thing when it becomes so popular, uh, something becomes so popular. In Uzbekistan, it's definitely really, really popular. Like IELTS exam, even people who doesn't know English know kind of what is IELTS. And it has become a more of a business for some uh, people, which is not good. Uh, and a lot of people so worry about this exam, uh, while it, it's not that a big of a deal in other countries, if you take a look at it, Anshu. Yeah, can I tip in? Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. It's kind of a mania for sure, right? People are obsessed yeah, I mean, with IELTS, like starting from, I don't know, childhood, right? So they want their yeah. child to take IELTS. <laughs> and like parents, you know, parents bring their children at the age of yeah. 13 or 12, 10. Yeah. They just say, we need IELTS 7 or 8. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, they just say, prepare my uh, children. And they just mm -hmm. give one year or just, they don't realize that IELTS is just a test uh, and yeah. students need to have a very good English to pass it. So, and- Well, uh, not, only, I, not only English, yeah. because IELTS is actually designed for um, people who are over age of 16. So you, it needs yeah. some cognitive development as well, not only language. For example, my kids are native speakers of English. They are eight yeah. years old, but they will not mm -hmm. be able to pass IELTS. You know? Yeah, you can say that again, it's absolutely. And oftentimes, uh, it's also these people have this wrong mindset. They just come, students, uh, they don't know what they want, actually. And they just uh, straight up say, I want band eight and seven. And when you ask the question, why do you want band eight or seven plus? They cannot answer this question. Uh, it's frustrating. And uh, to be honest, uh, like back in five years, like um, 2015, seven was a wonderful score. Nowadays, people seem to kind of disregard or not appreciate the seven as it was before it was wonderful now like people want just seven plus and i often tell them it's just a test uh, and if you let's say you need to enter university and it's six is now why you are torturing and why you are so all working uh, that's right about that's it. absolutely that's absolutely it's kind of became kind of benchmark yes. of who you are right people yeah, identifying themselves like right so i have aisles eight right so this is who you yeah. are <laughs> And I say, it's a you're part a of teacher? identity, right? Yes. Whereas, like, I can tell, for example, in Canada, to be English language teacher, um, mm. they require um, 7.5. Yeah. So, actually, any score that is 7.5 and higher, that's regarded already a high score. Yeah. And I say, you're not a teacher, right? You're not going to become a journalist or linguistic. So, why you need uh, 8 or 7.5, I say? Is just six six gonna be enough for you, or like, or like, because uh, and you know, I would probably understand them if they came like I mean, if they come with the advanced level of English, but they oftentimes they are the pre intermediate or just the not strong intermediate level students. They just want uh, very like this high uh, band score, which is uh, that's why uh, just of today my uh, advice would be. 
like you should not uh, try or even study because of you, uh, the your friends or parents pushing is it what you want if yes let's go uh, like invest in yourself study if not why you are like like right living someone's dream so first of all before even thinking about profession i would recommend them to determine the ielts test because there are two tests we probably know ielts academic and general training test which one do you actually need right because we most of you know IELTS academic test is for universities uh, to enter this high school and uh, general training to for immigration purposes or for a job it could be. And usually for a lot of candidates is just a one time preparation. Uh, you just, uh, I mean, most of the time students prepare, uh, they get it and they forget about it. Uh, unless uh, like that person candidate is a teacher or uh, ha like doesn't get the good result he wants. So that's why I would recommend after we determine the level, I mean, type of IELTS, whether it's academic or general training, then there are some sites that we can check our knowledge of English. Unless, I mean, if you're studying in an education center, they actually tell you what's your level, but if not, uh, there's a way to check it on your own. Like there's Oxford English, Cambridge English, official tests by these two very popular uh, sites. And also I would recommend other thing. It's called Mock IELTS. Very popular also in Uzbekistan. Uh, it is a test that has the same format, same things, but uh, it's just much less money we pay. And it's checked by someone who has an IELTS certificate and they will tell probably how much we can get it. And the reason why I actually, when I was making this webinar, I focused on myself. Uh, the, I looked at it, what I did before starting. The first thing was I passed mock IELTS uh, and I got there at the time like seven and I planned my IELTS preparation. I always like planning, uh, whether it's my life preparation studies, because I think when we plan things, we become much more productive, more organized, so uh, not just, uh, I want IELTS, okay, then go. No, uh, why do I need IELTS? Okay, what is that? Uh, what does it make or help me to do? One, so pass mock test IELTS in anywhere near to your city or place, if it's available. If not, you can do it even yourself on your own. I'm gonna help you how you can do it even this one on your own, okay? Uh, but first, Let's say listening reading test. You can find free testers from Cambridge, IELTS.org, likes full testers, and do it under exam conditions, and then check it yourself even. But for writing and speaking, you need a uh, help with someone who knows English, who can probably tell uh, it will be good if that teacher. So you need to hear a little bit invest money. It, it would be actually about, about $10 in Uzbekistan, it's just uh, around 100,000 Somali. Uh, I think it's uh, not a much money to know and to start preparation. And there's also nowadays two version of IELTS for both computer delivered IELTS and paper based IELTS. And uh, most of the students know here probably because of this pandemic and quarantine measures, uh, paper based IELTS exams were, uh, I mean, stopped uh, for some time. And recently, IDP started uh, resuming those exams. But I still recommend now uh, give the edge to computer delivered IELTS because it's more safe. There are less people in the room and you get the results faster. And also there are more exam days for that. And it's a future, I guess, uh, because technology with all this internet stuff, it's a future thing. So, uh, and I would also recommend to everybody who is preparing for the CDI to also improve their typing skills. Because oftentimes those big people uh, just type with two fingers. They don't know very well. So I would recommend them also to know how to work on their typing skills because there's no self-correction or grammar checkers in uh, IELTS exam. You, you have it in your computer maybe, but in IELTS exam, those functions are switched off. So whatever you choose, now check your level, take the mock IELTS. Let's say you get five. And your aim is six, right? So now you need to prepare. And how much prepare in the next level? I'm gonna show you probably how much time it takes usually. 
There's one good statement I saw in official IELTS channel. It usually takes around 200 hours of study to improve one band. Um, from let's say six to seven, it's between 200 and 300 hours. So mock IELTS, listening, uh, it would be good if when you pass mock IELTS that you have 25 plus correct answers and reading 20 plus. If you don't have it, if you have very less then you probably need to improve English because again, the foundation is general English. It's not IELTS because that's why I don't tell the names now, but there are some, uh, let's say teachers and centers, they just teach IELTS for one year, their students. And I'm um, confused by the students who come, I prepared for IELTS one year or some even say two years, but I, uh, I'm still stuck at band six and uh, well, there is no way that IELTS takes one year preparation. It's just, if a student has a wonderful English, like let's say real advanced or upper intermediate language, just a couple of months will be enough to prepare because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a test of English. Uh, so yeah. why to prepare so much? Hmm. Yeah, that's the problem. I think many uh, people uh, want to take IELTS um, even if they don't have the basic kind of foundation in English, right? So they start preparing for IELTS too early, I guess. So therefore it yeah. takes kind of a year. Yeah, uh, usually what, uh, what is a common mistake, you know, I recognize is that uh, students start very late preparation, some students, like they start at the age, like just the last year, uh, before they enter university and usually one year is not enough to learn the language from zero to you know, hero. So, and then they, uh, after one year, when they just reach the pre-intermediate level or finished it, uh, they say, I have no time left, I need IELTS. And then of course there will be off all the time, teachers will be, there will be teachers or some centers who are ready to accept those students and give them what they want, but they are not giving them what they need. They're giving them what they want. This is a problem that they don't understand. So I would highly recommend actually, um, so it's like a Google university. Like we write on Google what we want, it gives us. But usually like we, if we write band nine vocabulary or secrets, Google gives us. Uh, but Google doesn't give us what we need. Uh, maybe it's not the what we want, it's a mistake. So uh, I read this statement in a uh, book by Pauline Pauline, this Google university and this thing. Uh, it's I uh, just uh, I think those teachers who are ready to accept students at a printer level are like Google universities. They just give what they want, uh, so it's like kind of misleading, confusing those students. Um, so there's uh, for writing and speaking. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend it so that these sections will be checked by a professional instructor who has a seven plus band uh, band score, uh, so that you get the like a more reliable advice on it. And uh, a lot of students ask it, right? How long do I have to prepare? And I told the answer, you don't need much, just the three, four months will be enough if you have a very good English. If you don't have very good English, forget about IELTS, uh, focus on general English. Don't waste your time by studying IELTS materials. And, and also one little factor it affects natural talent ability with the language. Some people are just good at languages. Like some people are good with math, right? So they learn language usually more quickly, better, and they can improve in less time. But this is just a one factor. Uh, what I think is the most important factor is anyway, is the amount of time we spend on studying. Uh, like it's about like kind of a discipline. I have repeated this time and time again to my students. Uh, it's not like I don't need your five hour study on Monday and then have a rest for the next five days. I need you to spend only one hour every, uh, on every day, but consistently. And just I recognize consistency is, the, consistency is the key to success in anything, not only in IELTS. So uh, probably this can help them uh, now uh, the, moving on to the planning, uh, the thing I told you, it's absolutely essential. First of all, the less is more. Nowadays, uh, with this advent of internet and so much, we have just more than enough materials, more than enough online courses, channels to prepare. 
and it's just so uh, just exaggerating like so much uh, for some students. So I would recommend you to have the less is more, like the fewer you resources you have, the better it is. Imagine like you have more than 20 clothes and it takes you some time to choose one. If you have just two, you will take one easily. So it's like a, if you have like hundreds of books, materials or different options, it's a confusing. And also practicing with reliable materials because uh, probably you know not Europe in internet nowadays, it's so popular called tests like actual listening, actual reading or speaking questions that come beforehand. So uh, I don't know where you get these things from, but I never used it myself. Uh, so I would highly recommend to use reliable tests that is printed only by Cambridge. Uh, so that to not to focus on uh, unreliable materials. And self-study today, I will also give you a short self-study guidance how you can do everything, what to do every day, right? Oftentimes students say, uh, complain, well, I get general advice, but I didn't know, I don't know what to do every day uh, on a daily basis. Okay. And last but not least, atmosphere about the study spot, spare time, how much you need for this preparation. So uh, just to quickly, very quickly uh, on strategies because I have told at the beginning of the webinar that it's not the strategies webinar. Uh, you can watch it, a wonderful webinar. There was one of my colleagues, Eros Saitas and also participated. Uh, they have given actually all the genes and all the wonderful strategies uh, for all skills. Uh, for here, reading skills, schemes scan, reading for detail. And uh, quickly, uh, like listening, uh, Podcast is listening to advanced level podcast, just improve general English, learn the techniques, types of questions, and test yourself. Reading skills, question everything, like read academic articles, and general English uh, also again to improve. And types of questions, techniques. For writing, uh, just love writing. Every day, write a one paragraph. You don't have to write essay, full essay every day, just a one introduction, maybe, or one body paragraph. Uh, just keep writing every day. It's like consistency is the key and get a feedback uh, again. Uh, but if you're preparing on your own, you can do what? I, uh, here's a suggestion for those students who have no teacher at all. You can find someone, your mate, right? Prepare uh, can, another candidate and you can exchange, writing exchange, speaking exchange. So I check your writing, he checks. Of course, we don't get to hear accurate band score or whatever good analysis, but it's something better than nothing else. So it's something you have it because you might not realize or recognize your mistakes, but that person who have a, your partner can uh, tell you that. Speaking, not only IELTS, just continue to speak uh, to your friends who understand English only in English. Play with them speaking games. Uh, there were wonderful games were presented uh, in that webinar called, called uh, Strategies for the IELTS. And practice it. So in general, uh, expose yourself to the English, I mean, English atmosphere. Uh, whatever you're reading, start reading in English. Whatever you listen, movie, music, or what, uh, podcast, let's make it in English. A writing, a diary even, I mean, just could be a wonderful idea. Speaking in English most of the time. So these are the strategies. And here's one uh, interesting meme I just have put. Uh, it comes from one of my, let's say, students. Uh, there's a book called like the nine vocabulary uh, list and they learn it. Uh, and then uh, when we ask them, okay, let's make a sentence or let's make a speech or writing uh, some paragraph using them and they just can't use it. Or if they even use it, they use inappropriately, uh, not in a good, like correct context. So studying words independently or just even studying things independently doesn't help. I would highly recommend to learn and study in context. Uh, this will be probably a true way to learn. So now to the more interesting part. Uh, for, uh, probably just one question, guys. Can I ask you to write an answer? What does a student usually have 
if that student chemist student, you know, like a student who studies chemistry and wanting to become probably maybe chemist, uh, like scientist or doctor, when they are student, what kind of table they usually carry all the time? Can you write in the chat? So I can't see the answers. Ah, oh, here, chat. Okay, Ndrope, can you see the answers? I can't open the chat. Mindelev. Okay. Ah, Mindelev, yeah, exactly. Uh, whoever found, yeah, Mindelev table. There's so, several I, people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just changed it here. This, uh, this interesting idea came to So if you're an IELTS candidate, you should always carry a, this kind of table. I mean, band descriptors. So it's just uh, for whatever, uh, writing task one, task two, speaking band descriptors. And the reasons why I'm going to give now a short answer because there's a very good explanation on band descriptors by Elder Satorov and Miroda Saidazine in that webinar again. Uh, they give full analysis on these band descriptors. So, uh, just a now quick answer why? Here it's already written here what a band uh, seven, let's say, speaker or writer represent, what they should uh, show to the examiner in terms of grammar, vocabulary, coherence and cohesion, uh, or task achievement, or in speaking, it's fluency. Everything is written here clearly, and uh, you just need to analyze deep down by step by step, or just watch that webinar. It's already simplified for you by the experts. Uh, so my recommendation, IELTS students should have these uh, band descriptors. Otherwise, it will not help them too much. So now, uh, interesting thing about practice test materials. Uh, so I would uh, now recommend Cambridge English uh, IELTS series 10 to 15 to practice with them. Uh, one to nine kind of became old uh, as a standard. Um, it's okay actually to practice seven, eight, nine still, but um, 10 to 15 will be more than enough actually. And I would highly recommend students not to practice so much, not to focus on practicing so much. Because even that in that webinar, when I watched myself, uh, teachers told that their students complain, I have finished all the Cambridge books. I still get 30 correct answers in listening and less in reading, 25, 20. It's because they're just testing themselves. The testing, test, test, test method doesn't work. There should be a test and then learn from mistakes, and then uh, like study them, and then again test. So uh, when I prepared myself, I didn't even finish all the Cambridge books, to be honest. Uh, I just uh, finished until 14, from seven to 14, and I didn't even use other mini tests, just I used a couple of tests from official guide. So, uh, and uh, I usually practice three times a week. So why three times a week? Because uh, another three days, uh, we should study, focus on learning new words, learning new grammar structures, maybe learning uh, reading skills and writing, uh, writing techniques. So it's, we should not just uh, test, test ourselves. So I would highly recommend if you have these books to use them. If not, you can uh, you know, find it on, in the internet and buy it. Uh, so complete IELTS, IELTS new site, trainer one, two, official IELTS papers, all of these are wonderful, reliable sources. So I would highly recommend you to use guys these practice materials and more on practice, how to practice. Okay, I need how, how I should practice, right? Often come. It's also a lot of students just practice blindfoldedly. They don't pay attention to what they do usually. Uh, it's just a... Maybe, maybe they know there are students maybe in this now who are watching this webinar, I know how to practice. But I mean, from my students, they usually tell, they don't know how to practice. Should I just open and do it? So now I do my best to make, to make it more smart practice. How often and how? So first of all, I recommend practicing three times a week, listening, reading, and then writing and speaking. If it's even more, you can make it two times. But uh, three times will be, I think, wonderful. You can do it. And also keep a record of your results. What does it mean? It's just, I'm gonna show a couple of papers and documents I uh, made. What is it? 
Uh, just a moment, let me show you here. Uh, one second. We have here a document called mm -hmm, Docs. I guess. Uh huh. Here. Yeah. Uh huh. I found it. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. Um, I think I found it very useful. Uh, hopefully it's clear and you can see it, this table. I called it board of the results IELTS test materials uh, and I used it for my listening and reading testers. Uh, it's just to, to keep a record of the results, like to keep a record of what I'm getting. Let's say I did Cambridge 11 test one, uh, maybe on, um, let's say it's September 9 today, and I found listening 30 correct answers, 25. And then just after two days, I again do it September 11. And uh, just to, uh, in this way, keep a record of the results so that after one month or after each week on Sundays, we can look at it, this table, and we can see, am I making a progress or am I just staying on the same level? What's happening? Just a self-analysis, self-report, reflecting on our job. Because if we are just doing test and test, test, but we're not making any progress, we should probably change something. Something is not working. We cannot repeat the same thing and expect a different result. So uh, that's why my my recommend. Uh, I mean, my recommendation is that don't practice even three times a week if you are not making progress. Focus on building the language, focus on improving the language. And another table I would recommend is also to keep a track of your uh, type of mistakes. Uh, here's a table. Uh, I'm gonna now, I shared it, hopefully it's clear. Uh, is it visible to everybody? So, yes. Yeah, thank you. Now here, again, this is for listening and reading. Because uh, this is a score that you can improve on your own, especially not speaking, not writing, but listening and reading, you can definitely improve on your own. So uh, what is it, this table you can use? What types of mistakes you are making a lot? Do you have a problem all the time with the map? Let's say in listening. This, that's why I wrote one, two, three, four numbers. Section one, two, three, four. And do you have a lot of problems with maybe numbers, names that you have a problem? So you need to fix it. You need to work on that type of question. Or do you have problem um, with more, let's say section three questions? Uh, so what you can do, how to, I'm just gonna show quickly one, how. Let's say I have finished one full test, one listening full test. What I'm gonna do, I look at my test paper and I see that I don't have any kind of mistake in section one. I'm all good. In section two, I made a, uh, probably let's say uh, three mistakes in map question. There was a one map and I made three mistakes. In section three, I made four mistakes in multiple choice. And then in section four, I didn't, I just made only one mistake in note completion. And after two days, right, uh, I, I do again practice and I write, uh, I see that I didn't, I just made one mistake maybe in section one didn't uh, maybe two multiple choice again in section two I made. And then uh, again, I made in multiple choice in section three, again, three mistakes. And again, only one mistake in section four. Now, just with this two full tests, let me help you how you can do it. So uh, if I analyze my results myself, I look at that I have not big problem in section one, I'm all good. If I'm getting, or I mean, if your guy is getting nine to 10 in section one, you're fine, you're, it's wonderful. Uh, but I see that I'm uh, making three is a very good, I mean, not a good actually uh, number. Uh, if there's only five questions for map, because I'm making a lot of mistakes. So I need to probably work on how to answer map questions. So I need to find testers which have map question and I need to practice that weak area. So do what you are afraid of, do what you're not strong at it. So focus on that thing. And let's say I'm not, a, I see that I'm making actually a lot of mistakes in uh, this section three. If I see that the, this is the section I'm making a lot of mistakes in comparison to other sections. So what you can do, one uh, recommendation I got from my colleagues and my in Rex Education, they 
told me that why don't you print only sections three uh, uh, from different testers and do that instead of just doing section one, two, three, four, just do only section three, 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 three. Um, after some time, eventually students start to feel more confident in those uh, 10 multiple choice questions or in those long, difficult, confusing multiple choice questions. So it could be something to improve. So I would highly recommend to use this table for, and actually this is not a table uh, like comes from somewhere. Uh, this table, uh, like you can make it on your own, just the right types of questions and sections. And the same can be repeated for reading. What kind of mistakes you're making in general, guys? If you have a problem with true, false, not given questions, try to do more true, false, not given questions. If your problem is more passage three, then do more passage three at home. Instead of doing full passage, why don't you do only one passage, but, but work for quality, work for timing. So this is very, uh, I guess, could be useful. And I highly kind of appreciate if students don't do just full test. Okay, I need to do the full test today, I will do it, no. Uh, let's do it like something useful, something that can help you. Just uh, maybe only section three questions or only multiple choice or only yes, no, not given. So not too much. And uh, one last, uh, probably, oh no, two more handout we got here. Just a more action plan. Like here is it, uh, I'm gonna show band seven I wrote plus action plan. Uh, what is it? It's just a suggestion. It's not like a role model plan or perfect plan because it's just a sample. And so that students know what to do every day. They know what they can do every day. Uh, so they feel more responsible. Uh, I would highly recommend that they spend around two to three hours every day if they want to get a good result. Uh, so, and most of the things are written in this action plan can be done uh, by any student. Uh, here, preparation. So I also did divide it into two parts. But MWF, it means Monday, Wednesday, Friday days, what you can do. And two, uh, two, two days, right? Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. So every day, I highly recommend to listen to advanced level podcasts, reading actively articles, and reading some model essays or speak and listen to some uh, official recordings by IELTS channels. Why is that? Uh, well, um, Every day, imagine now in quarantine, yeah, we, uh, some people work from home, but anyway, we often walk, we often go somewhere. Why don't you put a headphone and instead of listening to music or talking to someone, um, just listen to podcasts. Uh, and I did it and I felt a great progress instantly after one month and after two months, even more great. And my students felt the same. So this is a like tested uh, method that works listening to podcasts on a daily basis, and it can be done effortlessly. There's no need to separate time and sit at home to do that. And uh, we got articles, uh, reading articles, not only uh, help to prepare for the IELTS, but also improve our uh, knowledge on a lot of topics like education, science, and also just to keep in touch with what's happening in the world. And, um, so for model essays like seven plus or end speech, I only recommend uh, official IELTS resources. I will share them. Please be uh, patient. I will uh, give the links and names of them. If you don't know in case uh, at the end of the webinar and answer questions to you as well. And what about the main part now? This is something that we need to do every day, but what about different things? So again, just a recommended version. You don't have to do it like this listening, reading, writing test, and speaking full test. So it's around three hours break. Analyze also mistakes, not just doing this, but also analyzing these, those tables I have shown, like types of mistakes and the uh, number of correct answers. And another three days working on little vocabulary, working on grammar, working on pronunciation, and just the improvement uh, in your language. And here's one important suggestion. Uh, if you, like it, you can add, like follow it. If not, no problem. Uh, oftentimes, students are very hard working and motivated, motivated at the beginning of the IELTS course. So I'm gonna tell it probably to uh, just uh, to everybody. Like, and they often prepare so much every day. They work hard, but after one month, uh, their energy start to just uh, I don't know, 
just disappear probably. And they don't want it uh, as much as they did it at the beginning. So why is that? Because they overwork and they just um, uh, become so exhausted with IELTS kind of material. So I would highly recommend, first of all, uh, just to do little, to start simple, little, but do it on a consistent level. Mm -hmm. For example, not, uh, re uh, let's say, listening to podcast 30 minutes every day, but start with 10 minutes, start with five minutes, not reading five articles every day, but start with one article. Uh, and also practice test. Don't do a full test reading if you have a headache. Just start with one test. Don't do like a full uh, essay. Just write one introduction. So start simple, start uh, little, but never ever skip a study mission. Every day, regularly work, except Sunday probably. Sunday is a day off. So it's a day to take some energy and to keep going. And uh, for writing and reading, um, just one suggestion, which I found it quite useful because um, this idea, like uh, timing, oftentimes students complain in writing and reading, timing problems. Uh, I can't finish the reading passages in under one hour or I can't write in under one hour. So I would, at the beginning of the preparation, I would not recommend to students to stick to the time limit and take, it's okay to take more time than usual, like finish the reading passage more than one hour or writing more than, uh, writing task one more than 20 minutes, it's okay. But uh, as you start to develop your skills, as you, uh, if you write every day consistently, right? You become more and more confident so that now you can start to put a uh, time limit. Uh, let's give an example with reading. Uh, if I do the reading passage uh, under, like not in 20 minutes, but it takes me 35 minutes. Uh, and I also, why timing? So keep a record of timing. Okay, I did Cambridge 7, test 1, passage 1, it took me 32 minutes. So next time, I, I first month, maybe I will just uh, keep a record of it. And then from second month, yeah, after some tests, I start to challenge myself. Okay. I usually finish Tess's reading passage uh, around 32, 30 minutes. Why don't I today put a time limit and uh, like make it 29? So I do my best now to finish. So step by step, minute by minute, by minute uh, make it better, make it faster. Uh, but within timing, your results also should improve. But if you are just reducing the time and your results are not getting better, uh, I would again, uh, again, go to the first advice, improve your general English. It's not going to help uh, unless you improve that. So this is a couple of handouts which I would highly recommend. Um, now back to presentation. So we have here. Huh. So I now have showed uh, how to practice three times a week. How to, uh, and how to keep a record of your results, record the number and type of different mistakes, and also record your problems in each section. So I would highly recommend to just uh, create one Word document or one, one just a paper, uh, copy book to write down the type of problems that you have. You can always find someone um, that who can give you advice from your friend who passed already. Do you have the same problem? Hey, like I'm having this problem. Can you give me advice? And Usually, uh, I mean, friends give all the good advice because they have done this, they have been uh, this uh, journey, they have all passed already, right? Uh, or just a teacher if you have one. Uh, so now, about study materials. Now we know how to practice probably, what to do, how often, right? And okay, I need to know first of all techniques, right? Uh, strategies, skills, where do I get it? If there's only one book I can recommend, it could be this official Cambridge guide to IELTS. And also uh, together, the key to IELTS success, Ben 789 by Pauline This is a book actually, I use it, the key to IELTS success to start my IELTS preparation. And I always recommend it to my students. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a wonderful, it's like a treasures, wonderful book. I highly recommend for any candidate and also teachers um, who are having, let's say, who have students to
to just look through this book, read it. Uh, reading even second time gave me, uh, refreshed my thoughts and made me a better, let's say, teacher. And of course, there are other uh, books as well. Uh, for example, there's a books especially designed for different levels, like Mindset for IELTS, Foundation 1 and 2, 3. And because uh, it's also a very good book for those students who come at a lower level, like pre-intermediate, intermediate, upper, they can start with the foundation level and then go to the first, second, or for uh, high level students, new inside into IELTS, action plan. A good book, action plan is actually a good book. It's like a last time preparation. If there's only one month left, but student has a very good English and this could be it. Complete IELTS, uh, objective IELTS, things and others. These are the wonderful books I highly recommend. But you don't have to have all of them. You can choose only one of them and prepare. As I said at the beginning, the less is more. Just choose one and stick to it. Um, follow it, study it very well, thoroughly, and uh, get advice when you need help. And again, vocabulary files, because vocabulary is really, really important. Now, online materials. So, uh, and probably, here I can ask one question before I show this. Can you guys write the channels that you follow on YouTube, popular IELTS channels that you know in chat section? Thank you so much beforehand for your answers. So popular IELTS channels like with IELTS instructors. Uh, we have some results, but I can't open the chat. Uh, here we have, yeah. Ah, yeah, I can see. E2 language, E2 IELTS, Simon IELTS, Academic English Health, Bridge Council, IELTS Advantage, uh -huh, Simon IELTS, uh, Ish, something like that. Interesting. Sardar Polat wrote English with Lucy. Wow. IELTS Lease, uh -huh, IELTS.com, Asia Ho, oh, effortless English. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, guys. I was speaking success. Oh, what a fantastic channel is that. It's wonderful. I highly recommend that channel as well. Uh, Donior Aslanov, really? Is there such a channel? Interesting. Well, anyway, thanks so much for being active, guys. Now, uh, yeah, having these channels are wonderful. Like, I mean, Simon, Arts Advanced, Lee's. I mean, it's somehow good. They give you some they are trying to help you actually, but sometimes they do, uh, sometimes they also do a little bit, some kind of confuse you or mislead you because they are teachers, uh, some of them not IELTS instructors, some of them not like uh, actually, like, I mean, 100% reliable. So even, um, I, I don't know, for some reason, I always uh, find it enough to follow these uh, channels uh, on YouTube. Like uh, official IELTS, you can just write in, you know, your YouTube uh, search button, official IELTS or IELTS Essentials with IDP or just take IELTS, official BC channel. So these three channels will be more than enough. They have enough materials for all skills, enough webinars, master classes. So it's more than enough. And three months actually will be not enough to watch through all the materials and study them. What about the websites to find free IELTS tests materials? Cambridge IELTS, British Council IELTS, IELTS.org, IELTS.com. These are the sites that I find it official. The, the materials you find them, you can trust. You can 100%. What about um, as a non-official resource? Now, one is recommended in the chat by Irul Tairazin. It's English speaking success that is run by former IELTS examiner, uh, teacher, Case O'Hare, that have, I mean, that has experience, a lot of experience teaching all over the world and also udemy.com for some good uh, IELTS courses. And uh, here's a little bit of Edward, my IELTS channel as well, IELTS Journey. I, and I, I'm not like uh, so far yet, I'm, I don't think that I am expert on IELTS, but that's why I just uh, stick to official materials and I just share something good I found from these websites to people in my channel. So you can follow it and have it. Uh, there. Now, uh, IELTS action plan, I have used it. So uh, just 
make it personal. What does it mean, personalized action plan? It means uh, oftentimes, right, uh, candidates are different. I had students that are much older than me, that have children, that had or maybe got married. Uh, so, and chill, so it's difficult to, for them to study three, four hours every day like uh, a student who has nothing, who has a lot of free time. So make it personal. Like if you cannot do full reading passage three times a week, make it one passage. If you cannot read five articles, make it one. Always change, change that plan and make it personal for you. Uh, because you're a unique person, all of you. So it's not a, like good to follow someone uh, blindfolded. So you need to change it, make it good, make it personal, and just keep also track of your progress. So this is a thing. Uh, and what else here we have got? Oh. I forgot about just motion and action. There was actually a couple of slides. Uh, that's good that I remember. What is the difference between motion and action? Can you guys write in the chat? Motion and action. We got some response already. For Sarah, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna show probably that word if some of uh, the students do not know. Here we had, I, just a couple of slides before. Oh my God, it was so much. Sorry, where is it? Ah, here, motion or action? Mm -hmm. I can't see the chat now. Oh my God. Yes, um, so saying their synonyms. Motion is wanting something, action is doing something, trying to make it reality. Bingo. This, yeah, Shahnaza is a bing. I actually she got it right. It's like uh, definitely. It's not. Yeah, it could be synonyms in terms of language. I'm going to show now. Go to that uh, slide. I will now try to give example and uh, just to explain uh, the difference between them. Well, motion is uh, thinking. It's, it's a planning process. It's like if I'm a writer. And I'm about to write a new book, so I have I start to think about some new ideas to write uh, for my book, but but I didn't write a single page, so I'm just uh, thinking, planning. So uh, there is no result for the motion process, but there is for the action. Like if I don't think too much, and if I write one single page, uh, just or even one sentence, that is an action, and that brings result. Uh, so that's why. Also, if I just plan, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to study this material. I'm going to do this, do that. It's still motion, and you're not taking action. Uh, that's why often, fee, oftentimes, student students uh, do more motion stuff than action. That's why uh, they also feel that they have already achieved that thing, achieved that statement, and then they uh, kind of don't work too much. So if you want to get some result, you need to act. You need to take some, uh, let's say, I mean, you need to put into effort, work hard, and do something actually. Instead of writing, I mean, thinking and planning, just uh, doing something is much better. And here's the thing, how to keep going, motivation is so difficult. So here's just quick tips. First of all, I repeated probably several times already, don't overdo it. Don't do it more than you can. And one personal uh, takeaway from my life. Uh, I didn't mm, probably uh, listen to this advice from anybody when I was preparing, when I was young, even when I was about to enter university. Uh, so I was sometimes we could study uh, a lot uh, in the, just even not sleep normally. And as a result, uh, I got this, uh, my vision impaired like I mean I had I, it really affected negatively my uh, eyesight and also some back problems health problems so never ever put uh, just even not only IELTS preparation education um, at the expense of your health health is number one if you're not healthy uh, the even the diploma probably of that Cambridge University or like IELTS 9 certificate will uh, just will be nothing in my opinion 
never ever uh, overwork. I got the uh, actually understood this after actually overworking it. I understood when I had had some health problems, and it was actually told by one of my colleagues, uh, Martinova. She also told me when I was working hard, don't work too much or working too much. And actually, she was 100% right. So I would highly recommend you guys to do little, but again, consistently. And take a break on Sundays. I don't know, go for a walk, uh, go for some countryside. It's not very expensive. Uh, it's free, actually. Going for a walk, even go for, going for a mountain, it just takes very little money. Uh, just uh, have some fun. Uh, talk to also like-minded people, like people who can understand you, who can support you, uh, not a negative-minded people. So watch a couple of motivational videos. Uh, they might help, but um, I don't know. It, it could be for some people. Uh, for me, probably I don't watch motivational videos too much. I watch it before. I get motivation uh, from my family, if I spend time, to be honest, and from people... Uh, who, let's say, are ambitious like me, who are hardworking and like men like uh, we have in rich education. Uh, I just uh, talk to them one hour and just uh, it gives me much more motivation than uh, 10 motivational videos. Uh, usually because in these videos, they just scream, do it, actually, you can do it. No, like, uh, let's take it, uh, let's be realistic. And uh, just because if I have a printer with English, and even if I shout, I can't get seven after three months. And uh, when we prepare, when we want to stop or when we want to give up, I would recommend everybody to remember why you started this profession. Why you are, uh, let's say, giving up or like, um, let's say, destroying the maybe goals and dreams of your family. Like maybe you're the only son, you're the only person in your family who is finally getting a high education, maybe. Remember why you started or if, it, if you are even a breadwinner in your family, someone who cares after family, you are the one uh, who preparing, because you, if you get good IELTS score, you will get a promotion and a better job and provide a better life for your children. So uh, when you remember those things, you will again find some motivation, believe me. Um, and imagine, uh, always visualize, don't, even if you don't have a wonderful English, never ever talk bad about yourself. I, I talk bad. I don't write well, I don't have these, I don't have that. Be positive. Being negative uh, doesn't help. So don't, if you cannot be positive, also don't be negative. But if you are a positive and optimistic person, it can help because you just, you know, keep uh, thinking about good things, results. Uh, and also if you work towards them, probably it can happen. So if you're so tired, take a break. Don't give up. Uh, take a break. Take a step back maybe, but then move forward. So when you're tired. So, uh, and so like one, I, so I told last but not least, uh, study, atmosphere, surrounding, environment is all very important. Like uh, if we come to house and there's nothing ready, study materials, or, or we have friends uh, just who just uh, talks and walks to nothing, we are probably tend to be like them rather than focusing on study. So here's just a study spot. I had it. So I had those all uh, tables I made attached to my next wall. So I could, they could remind me every day what I should do today. And I would also um, actually deleted my Instagram, Facebook account when I preparation. So I would also recommend you guys to take some time off from social media when you're preparing for such an exam. And even if, you, even if you are not preparing for exam, just to take some time off in life, yeah, you will, it, it feels good, uh, really good. That's why if you don't have, if you, let's say, if you have the same room for eating, sleeping, and uh, doing study, you might be distracted a lot. If your phone is all the time next to you, you might be distracted a lot. So switch off your phone while doing the study, focus on whatever uh, you're doing. And... Again, atmosphere is very important because if you have, if you're all of your friends smoke, you probably start smoking after some time. But if your friends are hardworking, motivated, and good people, you also probably become more like them. So uh, change your environment, change your life. Then. So finally, here's the one just quick action. I mean, sorry, question. 
Do you want to know the secret to achieve seven plus? Let's write uh, your answers in the chat. It's so interesting to know it after this is over. Because just a few uh, slides left to the webinar. Just don't, if yes, of course, hard work. Um, yes, of course. Okay, wow, wonderful. It is so interesting. Of course. <clears throat> Well, uh, uh -huh. okay, good. Uh, well, here's a gesture. Askar probably uh, listened to the webinar maybe very well. His answer was more, guys, today we talked in that uh, webinar, Strategist Files, uh, four IELTS teachers who have tons of experience, years of teaching, they told, there is no secret, guys. There's only hard work, there's a good plan uh, on a regular basis. So this is just a photo of my old practice materials and study books I have done. So just remember that there's no secret. There's no magic formula uh, or chip to put into your brain to help you to get seven plus tomorrow. Just uh, start little, start simple and prepare. And finally, let's say you have finished your preparation, right? Three months left, I mean, pass it, or maybe four. When you went to pass IELTS test, and there's a funny, picture I found from internet, when a student books IELTS exam without talking their teacher consulting. Uh, it's just so sad because I know that student is not ready. I know now he's about to not waste, but kind of uh, that spend those, I mean, uh, $200, right? Around a lot of money on the exam and he might not get the result he wants. That's why I talk to a teacher or someone who knows has mock IELTS again. Uh, and it shows that have you improved or not? Or you can pass official mock test. It's uh, presented by Australia uh, IDP, I think IELTSprogresscheck.com. It's around $65, but it's still much cheaper than official IELTS. Test. You will uh, get uh, feedback, personalized feedback, and scores by real official IELTS examiners. So that's why it's expensive. And pass the mock test, I mean, under exam conditions. If you're satisfied, let's say if you now get it seven in your mock test, okay, now register for the official IELTS test, take it, pass it. But if you still uh, not getting the result you want, I would recommend uh, getting feedback from professional teacher. And also, again, going back to preparation again. Uh, try again after one month. Uh, so, uh, because uh, one thing, again, from experience from my life, uh, I wanted to pass IELTS, like when the last time I passed, uh, I registered for April, and then I felt that I was not ready. At the begin in the middle of March, I took a mock test and I was not ready, I felt. So I postponed my exam. Uh, so postponing your exam for one more month would be much better than uh, taking it so you don't regret. Uh, so uh, finally, uh, it's time to wrap up. I would uh, ask and I would be so happy, guys, if you write uh, in the chat section or if you're watching it live on YouTube, just write one thing you have learned in today's webinar to help you prepare better for the IELTS exam. Uh, then we will wrap it up with the last presentation uh, slide. So, um, yeah, so then we will continue with the last couple of slides. Okay, okay. oh, thank you so much. It's uh, just non stop. Uh, thank you so much. In the lives, I... Checking my progress. Wow, wow, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so uh, like fascinating. I just don't, and I worse to tell that uh, highly professional teachers are still learning. It's just a probably tables for analyzing mistakes. Um, yeah. To check progress. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. So, uh, there's, I guess, voice, right? Some of someone speaking. So, 
Okay, working on mistakes. So here, uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah, here are a few things probably. Yes, yeah, thank you so much for in, uh, one more time that you have learned and you have mentioned it uh, for being active actually. So yeah, we learned probably the importance of mock IELTS tests. A list of reliable practice and study materials is a smart way of practicing and studying the importance of planning uh, and self-motivation and when to pass real IELTS. Probably now you have no one. And uh, one last thing from me is here. If you still uh, need a teacher, you can um, call or like um, go to Rixdale Education Center. Uh, I mean, offline for online courses. Uh, you can write, I'm going to write now in the chat, Rick's group in Telegram, you can write. Um, so, and also if you want to get these materials uh, on webinar, like these tables, which I have to, I will send it to Nodiropa. She may share it uh, probably, yeah, Nodiropa in this webinar channel, all the documents I will share. Or you can also find it. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you can find it. Yeah, I will send it to Nagarapesh. She, she will send on her channel. So you can download it. And you, and again, don't remember, just make it personal, change it to yourself because it's just a sample. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, I want to, again, uh, I want to thank to everybody, Nagarapesh, everybody, to my team, Rick's education, to my parents, everybody, just uh, for this opportunity. Because for you guys also, I would also recommend to say, because uh, it's because of those, right, uh, God and our teachers and our parents, uh, we became who, are, who we are today. We learned English. We know English. We are still uh, on a way to become better. So uh, I guess we need to be thankful and we need to uh, just uh, get better every day. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much. And now uh, if there are questions left, I'm going to be more than happy to answer them. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really useful. It was very motiva motivational and inspirational, I hope. And yeah, one of the participants uh, was saying like, it's useful not only to study for IELTS, but for anything, I think. If you kind of follow all these tips, right? You can you can study for anything, right? Independently. Yeah, um, it's up yeah. to... Uh... Uh, person actually yeah it, mm -hmm. it's actually we can uh once we learn this the like a kind of maybe i can call a technique uh, of mm -hmm. self-learning self just improvement i think there's no end of it uh, we can sure. always try to become better than yesterday that's um, right yeah yeah and i think absolutely and then you pointed that it should be consistent right so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i think that's the key um the consistency okay great so let's turn to questions one of the questions I see here was about your yeah, motivational, right? Do you recommend um, watching Uzbek motivational videos to us? So mm. is asking. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I, I would tell them, uh, watch whatever you find more motivating. <laughs> so more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because I told that uh, when I was young, uh, it se they uh, seemed to me interesting. But now when I get older, I don't feel motivated by motivational videos. I feel motivated by uh, the people around me uh, and by my family. They, like if I look at my just daughter and I know that I need to work hard every day just to make a better, provide a better life for her. So that's my true motivation, I guess. So if for young people like teenagers, yeah, they can think about their dreams, goals, and, um, and about why they started that. So, be, uh, because it's not just about IELTS, because after IELTS, the, the next most important thing comes university. This is a platform that they can, it can define their future probably. Mm -hmm. Well, what they will do in that four years, they will define. So, and uh, again, not comparing. It's uh, wrong to compare one person to another because we are all uh, individually human beings. Uh, so just uh, focus on yourself. And if you're getting better, uh, better than you were yesterday wonderful that's it uh, mm -hmm. probably yeah so. make small steps right so yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. okay great so <clears throat> uh, how much time should a student spend for doing his or her lessons per day in order to oh. improve english uh 
Well, again, it depends, I guess, their lifestyle. For example, if that uh, candidate has a family, children, they cannot just sit and do three hour study. They need to break it into two, three parts in, back in the morning a little bit, in the afternoon, or if they work. So they need to somehow adapt this action plan and everything into their lifestyle. And again, mm -hmm. I said, start with small. Uh, even if you're a highly motivated person, uh, not yeah. to or work, just start small. Start with maybe one hour every day would be enough. Uh, then, mm -hmm. because when we get this skill, um, we become real confident. We uh, Now we can do it. We don't yeah. need willpower, motivation to do, to sit down and study. It yeah. will become not hard as it was at the beginning. We yeah. can step by step make it more. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think like, um, not like kind of um, learning, right? Intentionally, mm -hmm. but like starting small, like even like I say, um, switch your mobile phone into English right yeah, so yeah, yeah. like or you said social avoid social media right but if yeah. you're using social media turn it into english right yeah. or or like um if you want to check weather check it in english yeah. right so um even small things like that so like kind of you're not doing formal education right but still they help you immerse in the um english speaking mm. environment right so yeah, absolutely okay. agree because mm -hmm. uh, right now i'm reading this book called atomic habits and there's a very interesting story uh the bridge council uh, not bridge council this bridge team cycles team they had this team they never won this championship uh over uh, like 80 90 years and they had this suddenly one new coach and he was trying to fix the small things, like changing something every day, 1% becoming better. And then they didn't focus on the goal, but they just focused on getting better every time. And then eventually, like they fixed these small things, uh, like uh, just changing one thing to another. And whenever we now, if we follow the advice now you gave, everything becomes English in our life now. And then it becomes so easy to learn, to. Uh, have fun uh, and the same thing I have done myself when I was tired even instead of watching football in Uzbek I just turned to internet I watched in English if That's I wanted right. to read about um, even some medicine I did I had like I, I needed or advice for something sport activity I just uh, yeah. read it in English so it was yeah. much better exactly especially watching or a reading something that you really want or something that you really like is is the key right so you kind of understand you have higher motivation to to do that right and that's what you should be doing yeah exactly if you're interested in sports yeah follow the mm, news yeah. channels or the read in yeah. english right listen watch them in english or if it is like cooking recipes yeah. right just watch Wonderful. cooking shows in, in english right yeah. so yeah that no matter what you do or what you're interested i think that's the key yeah, okay, another question. Yeah, question we have. Sorry. Uh, yeah, question. I have questions in YouTube as well, on mm -hmm. YouTube uh, channel. Yeah. So I'm reading them um, yeah, yeah. one by one. So there was a question from Ulugbek about how to avoid, he says, L1 pollution. So I guess it's L1 interference. Uh -huh. You know, um, when people... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, probably maybe he means uh, sometimes we use maybe... Uh, it could be two means, like uh, a lot of students think first in their first language, like mm -hmm. whether it's a Russian and Uzbek, and then they translate this thought, uh, they decode it and uh, to speak in English. Well, I think uh, I had this, I think every learner had this, this experience, like they had this here thinking, uh, it comes with the experience. Uh, the more we practice, the more you, uh, like that student speaks and learns, uh, we may not realize the times that we, turn to think in English automatically. Nowadays, for example, as a high level English speaker, I don't think in Uzbek first and then translate. I automatically think and speak in English. This is, a, I, I guess, came uh, because of the practice, because of uh, this exposure by only listening and reading in English and writing and speaking English. So it comes with time. But yeah. if there are some language that you, he, if he means that some just, words he's using like in Uzbek or Russian I don't know like uh, record the speech and listen to your speech and you will analyze what word you are using and every time you use that uh, mm -hmm. just try to eliminate it 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, sure. Um, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, I think it also becomes kind of a habit when some teachers, you know, always ask students to translate everything. Right, so they yeah. need exercise. They say read, like translate this text, right? Yeah. Grammar so translation is it <laughs> exactly right? And people get used to that, right? So <laughs> yeah. they they try to translate everything, right? So yeah, you have to try to kind of abandon that habit, right? So not don't translate everything, whatever you hear or whatever you read, right? Yes, as for the as you said, some uh, words that are. Um, uh, that are uh, that sound differently in English, right? Like some people try to yeah, translate yeah. literally, right? Like yeah. I remember, like somebody was saying "abiturian," <laughs> like oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. If you are not sure, and you, if you don't have a teacher to ask, so just Google it. Yeah. Just write the those way. sentence, right, or the word, right, and mm. see if the, it appears in English-speaking websites. Yeah. Whether it, it is mentioned, right? So see it in the context. Or we had another webinar about corpus. Yeah, corpus, corpus linguistics, linguistics, exactly. Yeah. Corpus. Wonderful. So uh, watch that webinar and you will see the different resources which you can use um, to kind of uh, check whether mm. this is how English speaking, uh, Eng native speakers um, speak or write, right? Yes. Whether it's acceptable collocation, for example, or mm. not, right? So. Yeah. Always check. Yeah, I always agree. Like not only just for IELTS, but in life, I use always Google and YouTube uh, for things. I don't know. Let's say I don't know how to fix a computer or something system. I just Google it. Uh, what is this? Like this problem is popping up in my uh, screen. So how I fix it? Like, and it has it gives answers. This is so wonderful uh, that this is the one feature that we can have advantage yeah. of. Uh, yeah. Google. Yeah, but I use it for like myself as well. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm I'm also kind of non-native speaker of English, so when I'm hesitating, I just Google. I write my sentence and yeah. see if somebody else is kind <laughs> of using similar collocation, right, or whether this sounds okay in English, right? Yeah. So I I see the other websites whether yeah. they are doing. That. I always what? also recommend to mm -hmm. uh, sorry for interruption, just to listen to pronunciation because uh, even right. myself, uh, I I made this mistake. Uh, like and it became fossilized error. Like uh, I, I sometimes mispronounce word, but I don't know because I learned this word back uh, like five six years ago. Uh, so we need to relearn what we have learned uh, before uh, because we might be uh, pronouncing it uh, not correctly. So I actually started again, uh, re like learning my fossilized errors, and okay. uh, so it takes some time. So I would highly recommend to anybody who are learning new words. Uh, not be lazy and check the pronunciation and check the spelling of it because uh, mm -hmm. once it's fixed it here uh, it will be difficult to change so when we are learning in the process learning mm -hmm. correctly is very important yeah absolutely absolutely agree and actually i i made another webinar on uh, developing pronunciation so i think mm. that's a really also very nice uh, webinar wow, you can watch it. it's I not because I, it. it's not because i i did it but still i <laughs> recommended some very useful tools you know mm. that help you learn so for example one of the things is uglish if you don't know mm. that it's a wonderful um, yes. resource that you can use to kind of um, improve your pronunciation. Yeah, definitely. That happens a lot because many yeah. students, they just know how this word looks mm. like in the written <laughs> yeah. form, right? But they don't yeah. know how to pronounce it, right? Yeah, as yeah. you said, and then it becomes fossilized. Okay, another question is about writing. Uh, Madina is saying, um, uh, writing is my weakness and while writing, I mm. lose my concentration. Well, uh, for writing and speaking, as I said, you still, uh, I mean, it's just so hard to prepare for writing and speaking on, uh, I mean, independently, but yes, there are ways, there are some books, those books have very good, I mean, uh, techniques, uh, practice, what you can do independently, I mean, if you're planning to prepare independently, you can study those books, there's an example of it, and you can write yours and compare that to the model answer and see, uh, analyze, or just talk to your friend. Uh, and also to improve this area, you need to just practice every day. Like, because we write less, that's why we get less uh, band score for the writing. If we write, if we 
uh, studied the writing the same amount of time like we do listening, we would probably get all seven plus in writing, but we don't. We listen every day, we speak every day, we read every day, but we don't write every day. This is the reason I guess we don't get, and not only we, just most students around the world, if you look at statistics, IELTS.com, uh, writing is the least uh, like a kind of a part, I mean, where students get the least band score, probably. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, absolutely in native speakers as well, right? In our mm. native language as well, we don't write every day, right? <laughs> yeah. And and it is academic writing, right? It's not mm. kind of informal writing, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, so it is kind of, it is what I say, it's Cinderella of all the skills. <laughs> it does all yeah. the hard job, right? Yeah. And and uh, sometimes it's neglected, right? Not many Definitely. Uh, they can watch the, she can watch the webinar uh, like uh, which was held recently like that stretches was mm -hmm. out and there were some great te techniques and tips uh, for writing uh, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay and maybe the last question here um Delna was is saying I'm preparing for going abroad to mm -hmm. America to US uh, started to participate in IELTS courses what do you think which band should I take mm -hmm. for studying and communicating with Americans without any problem. Well, I guess you can answer that as well because you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, my point would be uh, at the beginning, I kind of forgot this to mention. Uh, first of all, determine the kind of files that you want to take. Is it general training, academic? And then determine what band score you are planning. And to do that, first of all, mock test yourself see where do you stand at if you stand at let's say at right now at band six okay uh check that university's website they actually will be they will be written actually what band score is the requirement is it seven and they actually some universities also write uh sub scores like for writing you should have minimum these for speaking you should have minimum these. and it depends usually on the type of uh faculty you probably enter is if it's let's say linguistics uh, you need a higher score for writing, but if it's just a computer technology, you don't need that much wonderful score. You need more higher score for listening because you listen a lot, you read a lot. So I would probably recommend her to check it from the official website of that university she wants to apply and then yeah. uh, plan her preparation. Yeah, Please. absolutely. Yeah, you have to check where you want uh, to apply if you are planning to go to study because she didn't say whether she's going to study or just for travel, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're just doing for travel, <laughs> yeah. you don't need IELTS. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, uh, and that's true, you know, IELTS is for the student, for the people who want to study in English speaking countries. But if you just need uh, to travel purposes, for example, or leaving purposes, then um, IELTS might not be that helpful because there are other things that you have to know. For example, you know, how to um, check in an airport or how to mm. order food, right? Or how mm. to um, talk to a doctor, right? So these things are not covered in IELTS because mm -hmm. that's kind of out of scope of yeah. IELTS, right? But uh, for settlement and living, there are kind of other things that you can study, I guess. Yeah. So not necessarily IELTS, yeah. And yeah. somebody probably there was one question at the very beginning of the webinar, whether five is enough for studying in a master's degree, I think. In a most, oh. yeah, master's degree five, so. Yeah. No, I guess probably not. No, in most cases, no. I've never yeah. seen a master's program yeah. with accepting five. Usually, <laughs> maybe the lowest would be six, depending yeah. on the department. Yes, as Ahmad John said, um, usually... Um, uh, usually seven, they ask. They usually, yes. yeah. Well, that's hum humanities and social yeah. sciences. Yeah, they usually require maybe seven, but some um, departments, yeah. they require... Five, yeah. Okay, saying only Malaysia or Turkey can accept five, but not top universities. Maybe I have no idea. Yeah. 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 It depends. You have to check yeah. again. Yeah. Every yeah. university, yeah. every department has um, a specific requirement, right? Oh. Yes. 
Mm. Yeah, speaking about this uh, L1 interference, this how do you think? So people ask, so this is L1 interference. In English, we say, what do you think? So just yeah. a language note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you think we think by brain? We answer yes. that. Uh, so if you want to ask, yeah, it's uh, what do you think? Yes, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, right. Uh, thank you so much, Madropa, for uh, giving this opportunity and platform uh, to speak to all these uh, people to help them somehow uh, prepare on their own in this pandemic, not in like a new normal uh, lifestyle. Hopefully, it will be usable for them and uh, just uh, to realize their goal. And then, not only in IELTS, just now, probably in general, just to become better every day and just. Uh, Make, make some mark in their life. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ahmad John. I think we really enjoyed this webinar and I could also kind of tell everything that I wanted to tell people <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> yes, sorry for kind of interfering into No, I like it that every time I wanted you to speak, it's so wonderful because okay. I, I just, you know, you have much more experience and I really liked when you kind of confirmed that, yeah, this is the case. I have. I felt it actually. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you uh, for cooperation then, right? So, um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, watch, um, get updates of our next webinar. So tomorrow we have another exciting webinar uh, speaker from the Wyoming University, um, Dilnoza Fosilova. And then on Saturday, we have uh, another webinar with another IELTS guru in Uzbekistan, Big Zod uh, Mirahmedov. Right? So, yeah, watch us. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.